Judy Garland spent her life singing about bluebirds, but she died without ever finding them. She became a movie star as a child because her mother pushed and drove her into it. A lot of children have been messed up that way. I am Dorothy. Child star, an oxymoronic statement. One part embodies innocence and the other overexposure. And seldom do they mix with outcomes that are less tragic than Judy Garland. Garland is one of those child stars whose image juxtaposed with their reality and real life mistreatment is just heartbreaking. Pills to sleep. Pills to wake. Show pony. Overworked. Cigarettes, black coffee, prosthetic nose, cap teeth, you name it. A picture perfect image of Dorothy and a ruined self image of Judy. The dwarves used to play under her dress and get so hammered that the police would come to scoop them up with butterfly nets. Her stage mother only made things worse by taking to the studio and forcing her to do degrading and dehumanizing work that affected her public image and the people she parodied. The jump from the ruby red slippers to that was shocking, wasn't it? Oz was not the only Smoke and Mirrors production that hid a dark secret. That was Garland's whole life, crumbling under the pressures of a constructed image that wasn't her own, but was free to be used however and whenever anyone pleased. How do you cope with that? You don't. You self-medicate. And so she did. Judy Garland pleased and even enchanted a whole generation of Americans, many of whom in her later years wound up feeling sorry for her because she had personal, private, physical, emotional troubles and seemingly was never happy at all. Shirley Temple was marketed as the embodiment of wholesomeness and horrible stereotypes. She also revealed something about her times during that era singing Animal Crackers in My Soup that were inappropriate to say the least. When I left Fox, I went to MGM for one picture. Thank goodness, only one. And when I got there with my mother, we were separated. She went into the office of Louis B. Mayer and I went into the office of Arthur Freed. And he was going to talk to me about a, a movie he wanted to put me in. I'm 12 years old, you know. And I thought he was a producer, but instead he was an exhibitor. And I'd never seen anyone naked before, except myself. So I had no clue about what was happening. And um, so it struck me so funny, I laughed at him. And I laughed uproariously. I had tears, you know. And he got infuriated. And he said, out, 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 go. We got in the car driving home. I said, Mom, you won't believe what happened to me. And I told her what happened, and she got kind of quiet. She said, well, you don't know what happened to me. <laughs> Why is there such a lack of control and balance between the child and the star? Some of them are talented, started very young. Look at Natalie Portman and The Professional, a role that was far more mature than most girls her age could pull off, and she grew up to become a truly respected and grounded actor in the industry. Some, they turn out the exact opposite. A club is no place for a child unless you're Drew Barrymore in the 80s. My mother locked me up in an institution at 13. Boo-hoo, I needed it. I was a real wild child. And I just got so out of control that no one knew what to do with me. They drove me here in the middle of the night and they walked me right through those two doors. And when you go through those two doors, you do not come out. One minute you're at movie premieres and clubbing and the next minute you're in a full-blown institution with barbed wire everywhere. Barrymore has been very reflective of her past in recent years as the modern face of child stars gone wrong. She grew up too soon, too fast. Drew Barrymore says of her father, great dad, yeah, he would ask me for money on birthdays and, you know, inappropriate times. And I just wrote him off like, you're not a father. I just learned you cannot emotionally invest in people who are not attainable. Barrymore was born into an acting dynasty. By seven, she was a film star thanks to the mega hit that was 1982's E.T. She was also pouring Baileys over her ice cream. For every moment of success for playing an innocent role as a child, 
It was coupled by a lack of innocence of Barrymore's own misguided actions. It got to the point where her behavior and lack of parental supervision almost ruined her life and burgeoning career. By 11, she developed a drinking problem. By 12, a substance addiction. By 13, she was hospitalized for slashing her wrist. She would struggle to find work at 15 due to the controversy of her wild upbringing, and by 16, a girl born into a wealthy showbiz family was scrubbing toilets for a living. The spiraling nature of the child star is one of Hollywood's favorite train wrecks to view. It's like an amusement park where you don't ride the train, but you can watch the person on it, and the most enviable position in life crash and burn. The failed child star is its own unique section of entertainment in that way. Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, some of the worst and darkest accounts of child stardom gone wrong. Prey and a room of predators is the Hollywood norm. I won't even get into Heather O'Rourke, Macaulay Culkin, and the Olsen twins because that rabbit hole can warp your whole concept of the true reality of Hollywood if any of those deeper and darker accounts are actually true. Even the incredibly and undeniably exploitative nature of Brooke Shields, which I can't even really show, let alone discuss, makes me wonder what really is the difference between conspiracy theory and fact, if not a harsh truth, that may be too much to cope with and too well hidden to prove. If they are willing to show us something like a 10 year old on an adult magazine and a film like Pretty Baby in public, then what are they hiding in private? With people like Amanda Bynes, sometimes mental illness can throw people off when it comes to transitioning into adulthood. She was placed in an elite club of people who dominated the late 90s and early 2000s just to become another poster child for Hollywood gone wrong. Britney Spears is one of the most promising dancers in pop history, then her treatment and her conservatorship ruined her confidence and delineated her skills as a performer. After the 2007 breakdown, it all went downhill from there. She's still great, but beyond growing up, there is a stark contrast between the new Britney and the old Britney. Lindsay Lohan had a tumultuous relationship with her father and watched her parents fight, which is really the main ingredient of the child star to dysfunctional adult pipeline. Addiction ran in her family, and it caught up to her just as her star was burning its brightest. Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton are the heiresses gone awry despite having everything from the beginning that other celebrities worked their way into in terms of fame and wealth. If that is your environment, what is having it all if you still go off the rails? Shia LaBeouf is also of that same generation and age group. A difficult father plus substances, same formula, same chaotic outcome. The generation of child stars never get better or worse. Some are just left worse for wear after their time in the spotlight. Dan Schneider should have been nixed from Nickelodeon a long time ago. There is no excuse for those gratuitous shots of young actresses' feet. It's no surprise. How strange when an illusion dies. It's as though you've lost a child. Judy Garland